So you've completed the main campaign. You just hit the level cap on your character and you're probably wondering, what do I do next? Hey, what is up guys? This is Kyle Kent and in today's vid, I'll go over Tiny Tina's Wonderland's end game and what you should be doing. So unlike the previous iterations of the Borderlands series, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands has changed up the formula quite a bit with the introduction of a roguelike instance known as the Chaos Chamber. The Chaos Chamber can be unlocked after completing the main campaign, but the typical format for a Chaos Chamber run is basically fighting waves of enemies in three arena style encounters, followed by a fourth encounter which is more or less the same thing but will conclude into a mini boss fight. The encounter ends when the boss is killed, so just focus your fire on the boss himself. After the fourth room, you'll have three more encounters you'll have to complete, followed by a final boss fight. Now, your experience with the Chaos Chamber will vary slightly depending on what mode you are doing. For the normal mode run, you will the encounters and the end boss you face here are randomized and will always be different each time you do it. For the future run, it is a set and pre-planned run. Basically, this means that if you play this game mode, you will get the same enemies and bosses every time you run it. Think of this mode as a weekly challenge. It's great if you want to farm the same boss multiple times. There is also the extended run, which is the same as the normal run, except longer. You will typically fight multiple boss type enemies when doing an extended run. And just like normal mode, each time you play this mode, the dungeon will be different. There is... Uh, your chaos trial run, which is basically the end game progression for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Completing the chaos trial run for the first time will unlock chaos mode for your game. Now, chaos mode basically buffs the world around you, raising the difficulty of your game. This mode provides a bonus to enemy HP, enemy damage, XP, gold, moon orbs, and loot luck. And these buffs will increase as you raise your chaos level. So the higher your chaos level, your chaos level the easier it is to get the best loot now you're probably wondering how do i go about unlocking additional chaos levels well remember when i said completing a chaos trial for the first time unlocks chaos mode well doing a chaos trial at your highest difficulty will unlock the next level of chaos mode that you can do so chaos trial and chaos mode go hand in hand with each other so when you turn on chaos mode, it is active across the world. So whether you are doing going to farm named enemies in another zone or doing your chaos chamber runs, chaos mode is always active until you turn it off. And this is pretty much your end game progression right here. And your goal is to reach the max level of 20 for your chaos mode. So going back to the chaos chamber. As you do your runs, you will have a side objective for each encounter. These objectives vary from protecting a statue, destroying a statue, standing in a, in a specific spot while killing enemies, or keeping a fire spirit alive. The main reason you'd want to do these objectives is to get the extra rewards such as additional reward dice at the end of the run for extra crystals. Now, crystals are the main currency of the Chaos Chamber, and you'll have a chance to turn them in for a specific loot at the end of your run. The more crystals you use, the higher the chance of getting a legendary out of these statues you see here. Inside each level are buffs you can find around the map, which will cost you some crystal, but it's up to you whether or not you want to save your crystals for later, or spend them on a buff you feel you might need at the time. These buffs vary from increased gun damage to increased shield capacity and much more. Once you clear a room, you will have a choice between two portals, and as you can see the portals will have different icons on them. These icons will determine what reward you will get at the end of your run. So for the Dragon Lord portals, they offer two different affixes that change the nature of the encounters but, off but also offer more crystals. The Butt Stallion portals offer a small buff to your skills, the Chest portal offers an additional uh, loot dice that holds items, and the Dragon Chest portal also offers an additional loot dice but gives more crystals instead. I also want to point out in most levels there is a specific crystal called a Quartz. Now by destroying this crystal you'll spawn an elite enemy that you can kill for some pretty good loot and some extra crystals. So take some time to explore the maps to the fullest so you don't miss out on them. 
and you also don't want to miss out on the runes. A rune can either be yellow, green, or blue and can appear in any random location in the room. So it'll take a bit of searching to find one of these, but these runes are very important for another purpose I will cover in another video. There are also skull mechanisms that are placed around the area. If you see one of these, there will always be a skull just a few feet away from it. Shoot the skull to activate the mechanism and it will yield you some extra crystal. So to sum it all up, do your chaos chamber runs, do your chaos trial at the highest difficulty to raise your chaos uh, mode level, and just slowly progress from there. And with that, that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Drop a like and consider subscribing if you found this information helpful. And with that, I will catch you guys later.